Um, so I'm Elise, and these are my partners, Abhishek and Sneha. And with our advisor, Zachary Ives, we work to build a mobile application that detects cancerous moles. Um, so melanoma is the most deadly form of skin cancer, and early diagnosis of it is crucial for patient, patient survival. If melanoma is caught in the localized stage, the five-year survival rate is 98%. But if it's caught in the distant stage, that five-year survival drops to 15%. This really shows how crucial it is to get your moles diagnosed early. But very often people, you know, they might see a suspicious mole, they think, you know, I can never have skin cancer, that wouldn't happen to me. Or it's just a hassle, so they don't get their moles checked out, and this causes late diagnoses and poor survival rates. So our goal is to incentivize at-risk users to seek the medical attention they need. So right now, if someone goes into the doctor with a suspicious mole, the doctor does a visual examination and gathers medical history. This means looking at things like color of the mole, symmetry of the mole, if the mole has been evolving. Then the doctor might do a little bit more advanced imaging techniques and finally does a biopsy to determine with certainty if the mole is melanoma. So we don't want to replace that process. Rather, we want to fit right at the beginning of that process to feed more people into this pathway so they can get the medical attention they need if they are at risk. So now we'll talk about more about how we accomplish this. We accomplish this by building a mobile application that communicates with the machine learning model. So our mobile application first allows the user to either upload or take an image of their mole. It then asks for a few simple questions like, have you, have you had, how much sun exposure have you had in the past? Has the mole been evolving over time? Um, it breaks the image down that the user inputted into features such as asymmetry, border, and color. And then based on these features, it classifies the image as melanoma or not, and then displays the confidence as to how likely the mole is, ca is cancerous. So now we'll walk you through a demo of our application up there. Um, so as you can see, um, we first go through a questionnaire that helps determine some features that can't be extracted from a single image. For instance, has the mole changed in appearance? Then we ask, whether or not the mole is very different from other moles on your body. We also ask about your age, and based on your age, we try to find out how much sun exposure you've had during different times in your life. And then you're allowed to either take a photo or upload one. So in this case, we've uploaded a couple of photos, and this is, a, this is an example of a benign mole. We now see that it says that the mole is 87% benign. For instance, now, if the user were to upload a melanoma mole, um, we'd see different results. We'd also see a warning saying, maybe this mole may, may be cancerous and you should visit your doctor um, and seek medical attention. So the idea behind separating the questionnaire from the, from the image classification is that there are a lot of features such as sun exposure and appearance of the mole changing over time that, we can't, that can't be determined from a single static image. Now Abhishek will talk more about the machine learning model and how we extracted the features. Thank you, Sneha. So our actual machine learning model is based on a, tr a training set of images that we pulled directly off the internet um, for both benign moles and melanoma. So this is about 100 images for each type, uh, for a total of 200 images in our training set. And before we actually extracted the features um, from these images, we wanted to uh, do some pre -standard standardization and pre-processing of the images to make sure that they were all of similar format and similar type. So the main way we did that is we isolated the actual region of the image that contained the mole through basic foreground background analysis um, through uh, k-means clustering. So as you can see in the image to the bottom, we were able to actually sense uh, the general outline of the mole from the image um, and eliminate all, most of um, the surrounding skin area because by bounding the box around the mole. And then once we do that pre-processing, we then step into actually evaluating the images and breaking it down into features. And as Sneha talked about earlier, there are many features that doctors look for when evaluating specific types of moles in a pre-screen. But the three features we wanted to focus most of our attention on in the model um, where the asymmetry of the mole, the, the how jagged or, or irregular the border of the mole was, and also the color of the mole, not only relative to the skin color, but also relative to are there different colors within the mole itself. So I'm now going to step through exactly how we analyzed each feature. For symmetry, we uh, simply broke the image up into two halves and reflected one of the halves, and then we compared, uh, we just did a pixel by pixel com comparison 
um, to each of the moles, uh, to each of the pixels, excuse me. And by using a, a normal um, distance metric like mean squared error, we were able to find out what is the error between the images, if you will, and that was our symmetry metric. For border regularity, this was one of the harder uh, features to extract. We used a, a library called Open Computer Vision that allowed us to basically fit an ellipse, as you can see here, um, around the mole itself, and then also f uh, get, get the rough border outline of the mole. And then we basically cal calculated the residuals of the, of the ellipse versus the border, and then in this specific image, it's an it's a it's a image of melanoma, so you can see the border is much more jagged than a normal benign mole, and it has much greater deviation from the ellipse than a normal benign mole. And for our last color irregularity, we uh, ran k-means clustering um, with three colors on the image and isolated the three primary colors within the image. And um, most of the time, colors are, are represented as RGB, RGB values um, in pixels, and we converted that to a more linear color format from which we could find uh, a distance metric between the colors and average it out to, to basically tell us how far apart these colors are on a linear color scale. And now I'm going to uh, invite Elise back to the stage to talk about our results. Thanks, Chef. So, um, our machine learning model has an accuracy of 80% when it comes to classifying the images in our test set. It should also be noted that we biased away from displaying really low or really high percentages. This is so we don't create either very complacent users or very panicked users. Um, we also can see from our demo that our application is very easy to use. We had some of our friends test out the application. They were all able to do it without any instruction from us or anything like that. So together, this creates a really convenient way for people to determine if they're at risk for melanoma and if they need to seek medical attention and thus increase their chance of survival. We now welcome questions. Yeah, so from the actual images we downloaded from the internet, so we, I said we, had, we downloaded 200 images. Yeah. So about 180 of those we actually used to train the model, and then we test it on the remaining 20. And then we do that, uh, ten, basically we pick 20 different images every time and cross-validate um, to see how accurate our, our model was. Some, some moles are in very hard to reach places, and that's a lot of melanomas are not detected because people don't get thorough scans. So how, how, do you, how close do you have to be to take a picture of it? And if it's on your back, how does, it, how do you, how does if the patient needs two people, or what do you envision that? Um. I think in that case, uh, you, yeah, you don't have like a spouse or some, some, someone, um, yeah, someone else take that picture. Um, I think and one of the things is you definitely want to self-inspect as well, and then you, if you feel a mole in an area that you can't directly see, then you would ask someone to take a picture of for you. Um, but probably in that case, it, it may be better to go to the doctor um, if you don't have anyone to actually, I mean, you don't want to you know, bend in awkward angles and get, and the, actually the, the application won't accept any pictures that don't have proper lighting or proper angles for the picture. It needs to be close up of the Yeah. I would also say with the increasing popularity of selfie sticks, it might be easier. Two <laughs> questions. When you come up with the percentage likelihood, do you include the results of the questionnaire or is it just based on the image? And then second is how does a user use that percentage number? Do you have a benchmark as to okay, if it's about 50%, yeah, um, so we actually spoke with lots of dermatologists about this and try to weight the features that were most important to them. So the answers from the questionnaire do play into the final likelihood that we do output. Um, so it's based on a lot of research. We've spoken to a lot of uh, professors as well as doctors from Penn Med. Um, and um, as to your the second part of your question, which was... Um, how does the person... Yeah. Um, how does the person do it? So we kind of benchmark... Person. Oh, percent. So how, about 60%. So if it says like 60% chance that it's benign, anything below that, we say you should consult your doctor because there may be a chance that, you know, your mole is cancerous. And regardless of the percent, there's always a disclaimer saying this does not replace your doctor. You should still seek medical attention if you have questions or concerns. Yeah, so actually when we first started this project last semester, our initial goal was to actually partner with 
Hospital University of Pennsylvania or dermatologists in the Philadelphia area and get data sets of images because it's, it, I mean, it was actually a very time intensive activity to find proper images that are properly scaled and of the proper size online. Um, unfortunately, due to privacy laws, um, from the research that we found, it actually takes a year's worth of Approvals. approval processes to, uh, and we only had a year to do the project, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, this is, a, this is definitely a possible extension, and, and we're definitely going to take this back to the dermatologists we talked to and, and get their feedback on it. Um, but unfortunately, due, just through these privacy laws. And on the, on the note of privacy, we do have an appendix slide about just a disclaimer about how we're HIPAA compliant, and we actually don't store any of the images. Um, or on, on our remote server. Once you actually, it's a single use case, so once you take the picture and we analyze it, we throw the image away. Have you uh, explored FDA approval requirements? Because usually when you cross to making you know, a diagnosis or I would think a percentage probability of diagnosis that becomes a regulated medical device? Sure, yeah. So um, we haven't gone through any processes there. Um, so right now we're careful to say we estimate it's this and you know, make sure we're not saying, you definitely have this, this is a diagnosis. Um, it's really just um, kind of like a pre-step to diagnosis. And if we were to go through FDA approval, we'd have to, you know, be very careful about all of those sorts of things. Yeah, one thing we looked into is probably, uh, if we release it to the App Store, we'd have to put in a terms of service that the user would have to agree to before using an application. I'm stating that they don't hold us liable for any um, diagnoses. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.